Well, good afternoon. My name is Becky Sapper, and I work for the University of Wisconsin Extension out of the Environmental Resources Center. I've worked with Extension since about 2007, and prior to that, I worked for the Nature Conservancy for around 10 years. Um, I've been in the role of director for the Wisconsin Master Naturalist Program for um, about six months, almost exactly. And so I'm still learning a little bit more about the program, um, although I have been an instructor for the program since 2012 and um, have done uh, several courses um, as a Master Naturalist instructor. So I'm excited to talk to you today about the, um, the program, about our instructors, and about our volunteers, and about ways that you could become involved with the program as well. And I apparently was clicker happy before, which led to what you might, your biggest questions might be, what is a naturalist and how do I become a master? Well, the first question is easier to answer than the second. Uh, the first question as far as a naturalist is really anyone who's really curious about nature. Those who want to learn more about natural sciences, the students of natural resources, um, the person who asks, why does that plant grow down there in that wet area but not up on the hill? And why is that mushroom only on this species of tree? Or what is that bird that I keep hearing? Wait a second, it's a red squirrel, not a bird. The, those folks that keep asking questions and keep learning more. And that's actually really how you become a master, is become, by asking more questions and continuing the lifelong learning process. Um, you're not going to become a master after taking a 40-hour training course. But a Master Nationalist program and the volunteer training course that's with it helps to spark a little fire that leads you to asking more questions and becoming that master by, by, by asking more questions and learning more. So the mission of the Wisconsin Master Naturalist Program is really to promote awareness, understanding, and stewardship of our state's natural resources with a network of well-informed citizens that dedicate service to uh, Wisconsin's communities. So that's the official words. But really, what does that mean? It means that we partner with instructors that are trained to use our Wisconsin Master Naturalist curriculum. And they teach the citizens of Wisconsin about natural resources and the issues that affect them based on our Master Naturalist curriculum. Those volunteers then give back to Wisconsin with volunteer service. They also seek additional trainings so that they can further their learning. And the Master Naturalist program really builds a network of volunteers, instructors, and organizations that support conservation across the state. We also track their efforts, and so we can also recognize those volunteers and instructors. And at the end of the, uh, their year, if they meet the requirements, then they get um, a little pin with a, a wildlife on it. Here's the last couple years um, with a metal arc and a slider and an otter um, to give them a little bit of a recognition. They also get a, a name badge to wear while they're doing their service as well. So Wisconsin Master Naturalist volunteers attend a 40-hour training course. The training course costs $250. There are scholarships that are available, though. And so we don't uh, ever want to see the cost of the program actually becoming a hardship for people to participate. $50 of that cost goes back to the uh, instructors and their organizations. The volunteers then annually perform and record a minimum of 40 hours of service and receive uh, eight hours of additional trainings. The service areas that we like to see volunteers um, provide service for are in education, citizen science, and stewardship. And the big question that continue comes up is, oh, I wasn't able to meet my requirements for the year, and I've lost my certification. What do I need to do to get my certification back? And people do not lose certifications. They might become inactive for a year, because there's those years that you have those four out-of-state weddings or a job change, and you just don't have the ability to, to volunteer. You don't lose a certification. Just in the next year, you volunteer again, you become active again, you record your hours, and so you still maintain your status as a Master Naturalist volunteer. This isn't a new concept at all. There's uh, many of the states have Master Naturalist programs. They might not always be called a Master Naturalist program. Sometimes they're just called a Naturalist uh, program or a volunteer, um, volunteer Naturalist program. Um, or just even a, a volunteer uh, service. Um, Texas has had theirs for nearly 20 years, um, and Minnesota has been, their program's been around for at least 10 years, and they've been very, very supportive of Wisconsin's uh, emergence as a program, has, have, have provided us a lot of support. 
last year, I, I just had spoken to uh, the director of the Minnesota program, and she told me in 2015 that their volunteers um, performed 60,000, over 60,000 hours of volunteer service. And that's a value of over $1.3 million uh, when you use a Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, amount. There's also a umbrella organization, and this is called the Alliance of Natural Resources Outreach and Service Programs. And this program helps to coordinate a yearly conference for all the Master Naturals programs across the country and provides monthly webinars, just a way to keep the programs networked and um, able to um, learn from each other. So in Wisconsin, the idea's been around for a while, but we're just now starting to, to kind of get our feet underneath us. There was lots of discussions and from 2000, 2000, 2005 to 2009 about the programs, about programs in another state, and the desire to have, have a program, a Master Nationals program in the state of Wisconsin. And in 2009, um, th those discussions became more serious, and an advisory committee was formed, curriculum was developed, um, two pilot courses were um, occurred, um, one, in, one in Ashland and one in Madison. There was a pilot instructor's training that happened, and the website was launched. And so in 2013 is when this program was fully launched. So we're still relatively a new program. So who exactly is the Wisconsin Master Naturalist Program, though? I like to think of this with the proverbial three-legged stool, because it couldn't exist without each of these legs. And those legs are the staff for the program, the instructors that, that perform the uh, volunteer training courses, and then the volunteers themselves. But this stool needs something to also stand on. And we're really lucky in Wisconsin to have the support of the University of Wisconsin, which is where the program is, is run through, the Environmental Resources Center, which is actually uh, co-directed by University of Wisconsin Extension and University of Wisconsin Madison out of the College of Ag and Life Sciences. We also have the support of host organizations that allow their, instructor, allow their employees to become instructors and to run the program through their organizations. And we're lucky enough to have the support of the Natural Resources Foundation of Wisconsin as well, who helps us to promote our program, promote the activities that we have, and provide a fund for us so that we can receive private donations that help support the program as well. So thank you, Natural Resources Foundation of Wisconsin. So our staff, including myself, we also have Astrid Neuenhaus um, and Martha Martin, who are both out of the Environmental Resources Center as well. But between the three of us, we all have uh, other job duties as well. So um, if you total us together, our time for the Master Naturalist program really totals about one, one, one full-time staff person. We do have 63 instructors across the state. We just finished a instructor training in early February and trained 19 new instructors. And so we're happy to have these 63 instructors across the, across the state. But you can see there's some gaps. So we're still looking for more instructors and would like to have more instructors um, trained to give the volunteer um, training course. But it gets to give you an idea of who these instructors represent. And I know you probably won't be able to read this from the back of the room, but I just wanted to sh show the breadth. Um, these include colleges and universities, nature centers, friends organizations, um, tribal entities, um, Department of Natural Resources, um, just to name a few. Um, what we don't have up there, and what the folks I've been talking about today, is it'd be great to have lake associations as part of this as well. And I think there's a lot of potential for us to involve the, the lakes communities as host organizations too. So please, be an instructor. By being an instructor, you can help recruit volunteers for your organization. You can provide consistent training for existing volunteers as well as the new volunteers coming into your organization. You can receive program revenue, the $50 per person. So if you have 20 pe people take a course, then your organization would receive $1,000 for doing that. It's a way to participate in a statewide network. And you can also create a local community of volunteers in your area. And let us, as the Wisconsin Master Naturalist Program, track your volunteer hours for you and you can use those volunteer hours to help match grants, too. So we're, we're able to track those, those hours. So I thought I'd give you a little bit more of the nitty-gritty of the volunteer training course, a little bit of the, uh, the, the 
nuances that happen in a volunteer training course. The course covers eight core topics. There's required field experiences that are part of the course. There's resources including guest speakers, hands-on activities, uh, books and tools that uh, are part of the volunteer training course. There's a required capstone project that each participant's uh, required to complete. And we, of course, have evaluations so that we can continue to improve our, our program. The curriculum, eight core topics include landscapes, which is our geology, ecology, plant communities, wildlife, interpretation and education, water, water life, and then human influences. And you might note on this page that the, the curriculum actually has a, a draft on it. It's a March 13 <coughs> draft version. It's one of the main things that I'm looking to do, doing in my first year here uh, with the program is getting this curriculum from a draft stage to a final stage. And as I've been looking at that and looking at uh, the details that we need to do to complete that, I've also been thinking that we, there's a couple chapters that might be missing here that we need to add in, and that includes um, this, the service areas that we're looking for people to volunteer. We have interpretation and education in there, but we don't have a lot of information in there yet about citizen science and stewardship. So we'd like to include that into the, the curriculum as well and have a, a chapter on service areas and talk about education, citizen science, and stewardship. In addition, at the end of each chapter, there are sections on explore, teach, conserve, and expand. And these give examples of places to visit in Wisconsin in the explore area. They give examples of instructional activities that volunteers can use. They give information in the conserve section is information about groups and organizations that could use volunteers so that master naturalists know where to, to look to do volunteer opportunities. And then also there's an expand section with more resources so the people can continue their growth and learning. Guest experts are encouraged to help with the um, volunteer training course because we can't expect instructors to be the master of all these different chapters that we're talking about. So our guest experts are really important and they provide more of a local context for the materials within the chapter. Our curriculum covers the entire state, so it's pretty broad. Minnesota's curriculum has uh, different chapters or different curriculum for different biomes or different regions of their state. They encouraged us not to go that route, but instead to have one curriculum that covers the entire state. And so by doing that, the curriculum is pretty broad, and we work with our instructors to bring that broad level information down to where it's locally relevant, depending on where the course is being held in the state. Field experiences are also a really important part of the course. It's required that at least 16 hours of the 14 hour course is spent outdoors. And that's a minimum. A lot of our courses actually flip that and spend less than 16 hours in the classroom and more hours out in the field. And this, is, this provides a way for the different learning styles to actually grasp information, to be able to do it hands on, to learn by seeing, by feeling. Um, and so uh, it's, it's not just sitting into a classroom and listening to an instructor talk. The capstone projects are pretty interesting. Um, this is an opportunity for those that are taking the course to kind of build their skills and confidence in the areas in which they want to eventually volunteer. So they do, we encourage them to do this in a group of two to three people. And they pick a, pick a project and the instructors help them determine what the project is and, where, and who they're working with um, as an organization for volunteer opportunities, whether that be a citizen science project or an education project or a, a stewardship project. They do this capstone project over the, over the time period of the course, and then at the last day of the course, the class gets together and they talk about their capstone projects and they present what they did to their, to their classmates, and there's a time for feedback, for critiques of what they could do differently, for opportunities to celebrate the things that went well. And this really does help to build their confidence for the next step of going out and volunteering um, with an organization on their own. We like to do this um, with groups because it helps to demonstrate the relationships that occur um, when you volunteer because you very rarely volunteer in a bubble by yourself. You usually, you're volunteering for an organization, so there's relationships that need to be made with the organizations. And asking folks to do their capstone projects as a group helps to illustrate the, the benefits and sometimes the challenges that happen as far as working with groups. 
great thing, though, is that three hours of the time that's spent on capstone projects outside of the course can be uh, put towards the 40-hour uh, volunteer service hours for their first year. One of the neat things about the Wisconsin Master Naturalist Program is this, the flexibility in the scheduling. Not every course is run the same way. It really depends on the needs of the instructor and the host organizations and the type of partic participants that they're looking for. So some courses are held in the evening once a week over a 12-week period. Some are held during the daytime uh, for a half day, two days a week, over a six-week period. There's courses that are held for six straight days, nine to five. Um, some are held on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays. Some are um, held in the evening, some are held in the day. So it really varies upon where the course is being held and what, what's working best for that organization and the type of folks that they're looking to, to actually participate. If they hold a course during the day, they're not going to get professionals and the uh, workforce to be there, um, but they're going to attract a lot of the retirees. And if that's who they're uh, looking for, then that's where they're probably going to hold the course. Um, if they're looking to help attract some of the, the workforce, then they're probably going to hold their course in the evenings or on the weekends. Program evaluation is really important for us. We're lucky within the Environmental Resources Center to have a really good evaluations uh, department, and they've um, done a really good job helping us to create some pre-course and post-course surveys. Um, we administer this online, so it can be taken through a phone or an iPad or on a computer. Um, and we handle it all through uh, the Master Nationals program, so the instructors don't need to worry about that part of it at all. The instructors do do uh, check-ins more informally during the course, just to make sure they're on target for um, the needs of the, the class as well. So why do we do the program evaluation? We really want to always to continue to improve the program. This is still new, so we're still learning. We want to hear back from people about what's going well and what are some things that we can tweak. We want to be able to prioritize those areas that we're working on. And we're responsible to our funders, too, and we have reporting that needs to be done. This helps us to tell our story, to get the evaluations back from the participants. It also helps the instructors, because they get to know their audience before the class starts. The pre-course survey helps to tell them who's actually coming in, what level of knowledge are they coming in with, what's their uh, education, what's their experience, um, what are the demographics for age, um, it helps them to learn more about where these uh, participants want to volunteer when they're done, um, what, if they want to do education or if they want to do, uh, if there's more folks that want to do citizen science and stewardship, and that can help craft how their, their course is um, structured. It also helps to improve uh, instruction based on the comments that are received on the post-course survey, um, because that's where um, individuals are allowed to um, give feedback of hey, this speaker was great, um, make sure you get them back here the next time, or uh, you might not want to have this guest speaker the next time, or that was probably not the best field trip, um, or we probably shouldn't be standing on the side of the road when we're looking at this uh, um, feature. It's, it's a great way to time to get, get feedback and improve, improve the course for the next time. And it's also a very good source of quotes that you can use for reporting. Um, Austri does a lot of the evaluations for us, and she refers to um, these quotes as text candy because they're so sweet. I mean, it's really neat to see some of the things that people say about, uh, about the courses. This is just a, uh, a screenshot of our web page. And there's lots of different faces to the web page. There's a public face that uh, anyone can access and learn about the program. But once you become a volunteer, then you get a login. And uh, you can't see it, but it's at the very top of the, um, very top of the uh, web page. And volunteers can log in here, and this is where they log their volunteer hours and their additional training that they take. Um, there's more resources available to them when they log in. They can see more volunteer opportunities that are posted on the page. And then instructors also have a, another face of the web page that they get to see even more information that gives them resources for how to actually teach the course to. So there's several different levels of layers into our, our website. So volunteers. Volunteers are awesome. You guys have been hearing this for the last couple of days here. It's amazing what volunteers do and the impact that we have from volunteers. And before I talk more about the Master Naturalist volunteers, I wanted to show you a few stats that are from the Corporation of National and Community Service. I looked these up last night because I was part of a 
um, a talk yesterday with Candace, who's a volunteer coordinator here at UW Stevens Point, and she was uh, sharing some good information. I wanted just to look up a little bit more and see see more about volunteers. And nationwide, we're going strong with volunteerism. Um, almost 63 million Americans volunteer, and that estimated value that volunteer is over 184 million billion. I'm sorry, billion dollars. Another fact is that volunteering benefits not just those that are being served, but the volunteers themselves. Candace was talking about some more of the, the physical and mental benefits that volunteering brings, but there's also another aspect, and that's the fact that volunteers have higher odds of getting a job after, if, after being out of work than non-volunteers. And I can think of two examples already, um, just off the top of my head, of volunteers that have taken a volunteer training course begin volunteering for an organization and within a year have been hired there because they're just doing such a good job. Also, regardless of age, everyone can volunteer. Nationally, the Generation X, the 33 to 49 year olds, have the highest rate of volunteerism, but it's the older generation, the 75 plus, that actually volunteer the most hours. And we see that with the Master Naturalist program quite a bit. Our demographics are more towards the higher end. And these are folks that are very passionate about natural resources, weren't able to maybe make it a career for themselves. And now that they're retired, are really um, excited about being out in the natural, research, natural, research, natural world and volunteering. Over the past 13 years, volunteers have made a huge impact. So over just under 105 billion hours have been volunteered in the last 13 years in, in the United States. That's the equivalent of over $2 trillion. And let's celebrate Wisconsin. Wisconsin is number three in the country for volunteering. About 34% of Wisconsin citizens volunteer. And that's a, an amazing uh, uh, figure. Um, top two states, anybody want to guess? Minnesota's fourth, yeah. Um, Idaho and Utah. So in Wisconsin, 1.58 million people volunteer. And they volunteer 147 and a half million hours of service, and that's over $3.4 billion worth of estimated service. So we know that there's people out there that want to volunteer. There's people out there that are volunteering. So the Master Naturalist Program can help link these people up that want to volunteer and to, to the folks that have opportunities to volunteer. There's lots of opportunities to volunteer. We don't need to create opportunities for people to volunteer because in Wisconsin, we have a big need for volunteers. So how can you become a Master Naturalist volunteer? You can if you're over 18 years of old because we only have an adult program right now. We don't have a youth program. It's just for an adult uh, audience. You need to be curious about the natural world and want to learn more about it, support conservation, and be willing to provide volunteer service. That's all the requirements there are. Master Naturalist, again, doesn't happen in a 40-hour course. This is just a stepping stone to that life, lifelong learning. We do ask, though, that people abide by a code of ethic. If you can't see in the very back, this is a person reading a No Ethics magazine, and at the top it says, using your pet cockroach to eat free in restaurants. So because people volunteer for the host organizations, we ask that people do abide by a code of ethic. And basically, in a nutshell, that code of ethic says you agree to be a decent human being, that you're, not, that you're going to represent the Master Naturalist program, um, the university, and the host organizations well. So currently, we have trained over 400 master naturalist volunteers across the state. These pins represent a zip code, not an individual. So some of those pins represent you know, up to 10 people, um, and others are representing individual folks. But you can also tell where the holes are in the state. And those, those kind of parallel pretty well to where the holes were for our in instructors. So as we gather more instructors across the state, then they'll be able to attract the volunteers in those, those areas as well. Another thing is that even though we've trained 400 uh, Master Naturalist volunteers, not everyone takes the course because they want to volunteer. Sometimes they take the course just because they want to learn a little bit more about Wisconsin and they want to learn more about what those chapters are, and that's okay. 
um, we, we encourage that as well um, because it's the first step into social engagement and, and behavior changes to, to, to start that learning process. So even though we've trained over 400 uh, Master Nationalist volunteers, in 2015, we had about 150 that were really active. And those are the ones that are recording hours. And I still think that's a pretty good number. Um, 2012 was our um, pilot year. And some of those pilot courses didn't uh, occur until October, November. So we didn't expect to see many hours in 2012. But in 2013 up, you can see the trajectory uh, that we have here in this line. And we're really excited by that and, and hoping that it continues on that path. So for our Master National Service Hours, um, you can see that consistently, as, it, as the, uh, the um, years have gone on, the bottom orange, I think the color is showing up here, um, is education. The blue is citizen science. And the green is stewardship uh, hours. And a good half is, is education. The other half is split pretty equally between the citizen science um, activities and the um, stewardship activities. In 2015, that was just uh, a little over 9,000 hours from those 150 volunteers um, that were given in Wisconsin. Considering the program is three years old, that's, that's a pretty good number for us. Yeah. Sure, the question was, can I explain the difference between citizen science and stewardship? Citizen science, we are classifying more as uh, monitoring and collecting data, where stewardship, we're talking more about um, on the ground, hands-on land management activities. So total volunteer hours for the program between uh, 2012 and 2015 has been over 17,000 uh, volunteer service hours. Um, and so a little over 9,000 in education, over 37 hours and 3,700 hours in stewardship, and over 4,200 hours in citizen science. And for Wisconsin, then, that brings, when we're using the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, value for volunteer service, that for Wisconsin has already uh, brought in over $385,000 worth of service to the state. I just wanted to also uh, talk about the additional training hours that volunteers um, do um, that you know they're required to do the eight hours per year, but when we do the math, they're averaging more about 14 hours per year. People just want to learn and they want to continue their their growth. So uh, meeting that eight hours of minimum uh, additional training isn't a problem for volunteers. So I put a blank slide here because I have to apologize before the next three slides because I threw. The, every best practice for using PowerPoints out the window for the next three slides because I just want to brag about the type of work that the volunteers are doing. And there's so many words in here because I had to pick from those 150 people doing volunteer service. I wanted to give some examples of what they were doing. It's very hard to, to limit those examples. So I, here are examples in the citizen science realm. Um, the over 2,300 hours of volunteer service, the type of volunteer activities that happen in citizen science. They help to monitor bats, loons, salamanders, pollinators, deer, wolves, damsel and dragonflies, plants, small mammals, birds, owls, frogs and toads, earthworms, uh, waterfowl bag surveys, water quality in many different ways, um, invasive plant surveys, and bluebirds. Um, and you can tell by the different organizations and different programs that they uh, volunteer for here. Like I said, we don't have to create opportunities for people to volunteer. There's a lot of existing needs out there already, and people are finding them. So that's just citizen science. In education and interpretation, just to highlight quickly, I'm not going to read through all the words on here, but um, some activities that happened in the 4,800 hours that were done in 2015 included uh, leading a tour of a collection crawl um, at the Museum of Natural History at UW-Stevens Point, updating social media, um, demonstrating urban preserves to city management in uh, Sauk River, um, greeting visitors, uh, helping out at a nest box seminar at Horican March, Horican Mar Horican March um, leading a wild cranberry treasure hunt that included tasting the difference between wild cranberries and commercial cranberries. An after-school program with a science club. 
um, creating an interpretive trail map, both in English and Spanish, for a school. Um, and also producing a uh, radio segment um, called Kids Naturally. Some, just some of the education activities that happened. And for stewardship activities, um, so this is more of, like I said before, more of the on the ground work. So um, removing invasive plants, looking at uh, um, habitat for showy lady slippers, restoring prairies, uh, mowing trails, doing earth, a cleanup for Earth Days, um, creating pollinator habitat, building woodpecker houses, um, burning sections of prairies, uh, lots of neat on the ground activities. The thing that you're going to see in common here and that is required is that the volunteer service is actually done with an organization or an entity. Um, if somebody wants to just go pick up litter on the beach, that doesn't count as volunteer service. But if they want to go pick up litter on the beach with uh, um, the volunteer cleanup day with a certain organization, then those hours count. Um, and that helps just prevent hours of um, folks uh, t weeding their native garden and in their own backyard and, and calling that volunteer service. Um, although you can do uh, bird feeder watches as long as it's part of um, the, the bird, weeder, bird feeder watch programs. So join us. Become a volunteer. Become an instructor and host volunteer trainings. Help, help us to provide additional training opportunities to our Master Naturalist volunteers. In 2016, we already have nine courses listed um, on our website uh, across the state, and we're hoping that we'll probably double that amount um, in the next month or so as, as uh, instructors start to post their courses. We also are looking to have a instructor training in the lacrosse area um, sometime this fall, so if you're interested in that, please, please let me know. And so I've been asked in this first six months in this position, you know, what do I think about the Wisconsin Master Naturalist Program? And, and I have to say I've totally bought into the, the idea of this lifelong learning. Um, I really um, enjoy the, the aspect of that we're continually to ask questions, we're continually trying to learn and better ourselves for, for the communities here in Wisconsin. I also like the networking, um, whether it's providing connections between organizations, whether it's providing connections as, I, as an instructor that I'm working with uh, guest resource speakers in my area, um, whether it's making the connections with the volunteers. Anytime there's a conversation, there's connections made, it's going to lead to good things. And so I really like that networking side of things. That it's really inspiring. Um, working with volunteers just motivates someone. And the other part of my job, I work with natural, re natural resource agencies and organizations. And, and those folks are very passionate, too. They have to be passionate to work in this natural resources world. We certainly don't get paid to do it, right? Um, but they live with it every day. And then when you turn and you work with volunteers, they get so excited um, about the activities that they're doing. Um, and it, it does leave an impression. And just as an example, yesterday when I came and I picked up my name tag um, at the registration desk, the the person who handed me my name tag said, oh, you're with the Master Naturalist Program. And she said, I took the Master Naturalist Program in Minnesota. And she said, it was a life-changing event. And I kind of smiled, a life-changing event? She goes, no, really. It's the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing now, because I took that course. And you know, it's just stories like that it just mean so much, because it, the experiences that people have during this uh, process of this uh, training course, I think, are, are really meaningful. And in the famous words of Dr. Seuss, there's fun to be done. Because this is really fun. I'm having a great time in my job um, with the Master Naturalist Program. It's a lot of fun. And so that is the end of my, my talk. Do, do we have time for questions? Okay. Oh, thanks.